Let's bring in Megan Alexander. Here she is. I like Princess Bride, but some people are obsessed with the Princess Bride. We'll be on this December season two, Small Town Christmas. So, Amanda, what movies have you seen? Um, well, I just went to see... What did I just go see? I just saw one with you. We went to see Crawdads. Uh, Where the Crawdads sing. Where the Crawdads sing. And I, it was great. It was really... It was fine. But, like... Like, fine. Like, was it disappointing to you having read the book? and Or was okay. it so long ago that you read the book that you don't... I don't want to spoil anything for people. I, books hardly ever translate perfectly to film. It's true. I think Harry Potter is the only example of movies that were books that I love. That's a good point. And even then, there's so much that you miss in the films that is in the book. And I feel the same way about Crawdads. It's um, that was such a powerful book, though. You said it on the way out of the theater. You said I should be crying. But I should I'm not be crying. crying. I'm not. But you were crying at the end of the book, of course. But you're not crying at the end of the movie, and so there's a disconnect. There's some disconnects, and mostly it felt that very important parts of the book, at least to me, were rushed in the film. Yeah, and the parts, whole thing felt very rushed. Parts of the film that I felt were very slow weren't very important to the story, yeah. in my opinion. So. There were things that I would have done differently if I wrote the script, yeah. but obviously I'm not writing the script. You know, so. in the in the movie, I mean, in the book, she's in so much peril, right, with her dad, her dad being an yes. abusive father, with the men coming around the marsh that she, um, you know, has to. She she's just she's always like in peril. She lives on her own in a marsh, and she's people in a come by in the boat. State of fight or flight, and she yes. in the book. And, and it the makes movie you doesn't feel like that. An anxious ball of nerves when you're reading the book to know that she's just constantly. But I guess in fear. In that, on that note, you would have to have the actress, like the the character, would have to be comfortable being out there, or why would she be out there? So obviously she has to be comfortable. But so I didn't feel that elevated sense of like danger lurking. And then I definitely felt like it was rushed. And as a filmmaker myself, I had I took issue with some of the stuff just like being. The scenes didn't breathe. The characters didn't develop. The boys looked very similar. Um, Chase and uh, what's his name? Ja? No, uh, the other boy. Tate. Oh, Tate. They looked similar to me. It was. There wasn't yeah. enough. Tate, I thought, was a perfect cast. I, he is a, who I pictured Tate to be. Yeah. In the book, so I thought they nailed that. But she should have been. I feel like she should have been more voluptuous, more from a yes. distance. Men are like, oh, look at her. And in the book, you expect. Based on her description or whatever and how the men interact with her, you expect her to kind of just be this natural knockout. Yeah. But in the movie, she's beautiful. Yeah. And she is a natural beauty, but I don't look at her like... You don't see her coming from a distance. No, not like this mesmerizing beauty like you... And she also didn't do a southern accent, which was... Well, she did, but she's also British, and so she would kind of slip into yeah, that. Yeah, the British kid. Every once in a while. Bit. I don't think she did. You thought she did a southern accent? I didn't hear any southern yeah. in there. I think she did. My biggest complaint was the twist of the book. The most important part to me is when she... Spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but there's a part of the book where, and it's part of her alibi, where she is at a dinner and she's talking about why she is not afraid of nature. Because she wants to write a book, right? This is with a publisher she's of the She's already book. written the book. And she's at dinner with her publishers and she's explaining. And in the movie, they show this scene where she's saying, you know, there's a reason why the praying mantis, you know, eats the, her mate. Oh, yeah. And there's, yeah. you know, the fireflies have two different types of light to attract a mate and attract a meal and those kind of things. And then at the end of the movie, whenever the twist is revealed, which I won't give away, those lines are very important again. Yeah. And... They, they didn't play that. They right. washed right over yeah. it. Like it was beautiful. But you, I it was feel a like beautiful movie. But anyone who watched the movie and did not read the book does not understand the whole concept of the book. No, and I feel like the people that we went with, because we went with a group of like ten, and what like seven of us had read the book and three hadn't, and those three really enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but they have so no idea what the book's. They have no got. idea what is what's what it's all about. Um, and then and then. Like so, I think it's really interesting because Crawdads is the only movie this year, I think, that's an original idea. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, it, it, based on based on a book, so it is from an IP. But 
It's the only movie that's not a sequel or a name we know, right? Maverick is a sequel. Um, you have Buzz Lightyear is a sequel. I want to talk about that one. Um, Jurassic World is a sequel. Sequel. We know who Elvis is. We know who David Bowie is. We know who Whitney Houston is. We know these movies. Mm-hmm. Like we know these characters. We know what we're kind of what we're getting. Right. So it's weird that like these days everybody wants this comfort, right, of this whole thing. But um, but I Buzz Lightyear. Did you see it? I haven't yet. So Tucker and I went because it was the only movie playing in Tahoe this summer when we were up there. It's the only movie at the, our little movie theater, and we were we just had a night. We had nothing to do. And we're like, let's go to the movies. And so we went, but we went not expecting much. And then we were like, no, this is actually, actually really like this. Like it, it wasn't, it, it starts off with the, um, I feel like have we talked about this before. It starts off with like the whole, um, idea that, um, this is Andy's toy that he was given on his birthday. Mm-hmm. And this is this this is the movie he watched to make him like, the, and that just set it up for me right. In the right way. And it was a really lovely, I thought it was a really lovely telling of a story. If you're not expecting toy story. I right. think it was beautifully written. I think his voice was great. I think, um, you know, you don't get any other taste of any other animal or animals, uh, toys in it. You don't get any taste flavor of Toy Story. But as a familiar kind of character, you're it, it warms you up. It brings you in. I I want to see it. We just haven't done it. My kids are kind of burned out on Pixar after the last few. They're yeah. they're like they're all sad. Oh, and I was like. Oh, you're not wrong. And they're yeah. all about death. And I'm yeah. like, okay, well. Then. Even Toy Story had, the right. last Toy Story was pretty brutal where they're all heading towards the incinerator. You're like, oh, that's what? No, there's one after that now. Oh, that's right. Four. That was three. Three and was they the liked, one, right? They liked that one, okay, Toy I Story I still think four. three was the best. Three was the best. They should have stopped. That there. was a brilliant one. But, um, here are some things that I was thinking about um, that I, like, things I'm, so here are some shows that I haven't been able to finish, funny okay. enough. Gilded Age, I have like one or two episodes left, haven't finished that. Murderville was a fun show, but that's one that you can take or leave. It's mm-hmm. like they set up where the the actor comes in, like a guest star comes in to a, like almost like a CSI type show. And they come in and they're doing, um, there's a murder mystery and that the, the guest star has to decide who it is. They don't know what's going on, but everyone else is scripted. You told me about this. Yeah. Yes. I've watched a few episodes. It's great, but it's not that. something I like finished. I still have not finished Yellowstone. Do you Ooh. know that season four? I just would, Mark gave up on it. It was a lot of like rodeo stuff that we just kind of didn't didn't get into. Um, I still got to watch Mandalorian, believe it or not. I have I've watched the first one, but um, you have to finish Mandalorian. I know, I really do. Yellow Jackets, I haven't finished. I still haven't finished um, the Great. I think I have like a handful that of that one. I could left. not stop. I love it. I just I Inventing stopped Anna? and I haven't gone back. Did you watch Inventing Anna? No, I never even started it because I know the story. I don't care. And she's yeah. not that fascinating to me. No, it's not that fascinating. Um, I still got to go back to Ozark and Outlander. Made, I still haven't watched. We talk about that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Fargo, I want to watch. Fargo? Yeah, the Fargo they TV made, show. They made and a every, show? I think every season it changes, right? So there's, yeah, Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks' son. Kirsten Dunst has been in it. Ewan McGregor. Chris Rock. Oh, I think Chris Rock did a whole season. Oh, wow. Um, Patrick Wilson. How have I not heard about this? It's so uh, Jesse Plemons from um, I I love him from Friday Night Lights. Jason Schwartzman, like Ted Danson. Actually, I want to say Ted Danson's doing the new season. Anyway, it's just a it's a show I've been wanting to watch because Christina Milati, who I think is hilarious, like it just seems like Bob Odenkirk, who's Saul from Better Call Saul. Have you watched that? Oh one? no, I haven't. Even though I've never really watched, Bring I know Bad, about it. Better Call Saul is pretty funny. It's like this. It's like a yeah. dry humor. I want to watch this. I got to okay. watch this. But it, like Kaminsky Method, kind of in that same vein. Um, one movie I hated. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just jump in at it. Moonfall. I haven't even heard of this. Shocked about this one. Like the cast. Who else is in it? It's um, Halle Berry, who is cannot disappoint me usually. Right. This was traumatic for me to watch. Like her she was this. a bad actress in it. Oh, like you just she or even she, bad... even she can't save it. Okay. So it's um, Patrick Wilson, John Bradley. Like, I love these guys. Brad, John Bradley is from, um, he's a big part of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Charlie Plummer. I mean, we just got, like, Michael Michael Penna, who's a friend of mine. Like, I mean, this was a cast that should have been able to save this movie. And it's uh, Roland Emmerich directed. It It's it's one of these, well, here, let me, let me tell you exactly what I wrote. Um... I wrote that it is it's terrible acting. Oh <laughs> it's, no. Um it's got huge holes in the story, time jumps and it's not even slightly believable. Like you know with like sci-fi stuff and whatnot, you have to have like little elements of 
okay, I could like they explained that. I could see how that could happen. I wish I had just watched it because I can't recall exactly like an example of it, but it was just like like something's happening and the they're on the moon and the moon is tumbling towards Earth and luckily it gets so close because the gravitational pull, they happen to jump off the moon and be right where they're supposed to be. Like they jump right back to Arizona or wherever they are. Right? Like it's like what? What? <laughs> Wait, what just happened here? And of course everyone survives everything. Like, you know, it's just like just I, I had the a hard moon time is plummeting towards the earth and they just it's something about jump the off. gravity and the, the solar systems collapsing. Like it's yeah, there's like a whole gravity thing going on and the moon gets pulled down and um what's his not name? Uh what's that other movie? Tomorrow they go to Green Oh, it's called Greenland. Do you remember Greenland? Um it's that one is uh Gerard Butler and it, that one was a little bit more believable, but still not my favorite. That was only like a year or two ago. I think it was on Netflix. They just go to Greenland. They go to Greenland, and uh, no, they have to get to Greenland because the world there's um, asteroids coming or something, as they usually do. You know, there's always asteroids <laughs> coming, and they're going to destroy everything. But they're happening. The government has bunkers, and certain people are allowed in the bunker. So your phone will ding if you get a bunker, if you get called to a bunker. So he and his um, family are called to the bunker, but of course they forget their sons like asthma medication in the car so he runs back for it but then the family's gonna be loaded on a ship but then they don't get on that ship and that ship blows up but he thinks they're on that ship and they're dead and then blah 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 blah. anyway they have to get to greenland but at some point they get to like her dad's house where nobody's around anymore everyone's fled the town they have plenty of food in the fridge they're in the nice little house it's quiet there just finish out your days there why are you trying to get to greenland why do you got to get to canada <laughs> and get on the helicopter that's going to get you to the bunker and hope they get you in the bunker and like right. people are dying along the way like can you just stay nice and happy and cuddle until the end? Go out like, with an asteroid. Yeah. Like instead of like, you know, on a motorcycle, you know, with it chasing you. Ah, and then live in a post-apocalyptic world. After. I love apocalyptic movies. They're just never like Waterworld was one of these movies. I was in oh, Canada. Oh, gosh. No, that was traumatic. I was shooting a movie, though, in Canada. And I made the whole crew. I was so excited about that movie. I was like, guys, we're going to see it the night it comes out. I cannot wait for Waterworld. It looks amazing. And then we go to see it. I was like, what? What was that? They're fighting over dirt. Like a handful of dirt. That's not going to do anything for you. <laughs> You're floating in water world. <laughs> anyway, I love apocalyptic. I love apo- I love apocalyptic <laughs> movies. <laughs> but no one does them right. I'm sorry. Well, on your list of movies that you need to make, show the apocalypse in the way you would do it. I'm going to. I'm going to. I've been wanting to show like a, a, a mother daughter. Like I've been wanting to write a movie like a p- apocalyptic mother daughter like escaping the acid rain and whatnot shifting away from the apocalypse and maybe more towards apocalypse. christmas and talk about someone that's coming in today <laughs> she was born in seattle but she splits her time between new york and here in nashville lucky us she was on inside edition she um is on the up channel for the small town christmas series which um she's got some news for us today about that show um she does ch- she's written some children's books and her newest one is called the magic of small town christmas we have a copy hang on I will you do. show you. Here's her Hello. magic of a small town Christmas. So cute. And she has another book that she came out with called One More Hug, which I can't wait to hear about. And uh, she was a special correspondent in 2014 on the NFL Thursday nights. Yes. She was also in God's Not Dead 3. Mm-hmm. So we have a little bit of something in common since I did number two. Um, you <laughs> can hear and see her. <laughs> what? I'm I did well. number two. Sorry. <laughs> going to be a child about it. <laughs> Sorry. I was on God's Not Dead 2. Let me put it properly. Um, you can see and hear her in a variety of outlets, syndicated news channels, magazine television shows like Inside Edition, like we said, CBS television shows, Fox, Lifetime, Hallmark Channel, many more. She's covered a variety of news topics. She covered the last 10 Super Bowls, um, swimming with wild animals, covering an adventure travel story or chatting with celebrities. She's known for her sense of humor and her knack for putting people at ease while entertaining and, and informing the public. So I'm excited to bring in. Let's should we bring her in? Bring her in. Let's bring in Megan Alexander. Here she is. So Melissa, I'm yeah. so excited for you. You've been really working hard on getting your immune system up and going really well and getting your body in shape. What's your secret weapon now? Well, I've been using AG1. Do you know AG1? I have heard of this. It's made by Athletic Greens. It's great. It tastes great. Uh, you do a scoop. Oh no, cuz I know those veggie things can be not so tasty. 
This one is pretty yum. Okay, what do you, you do? like put a scoop in your water in the morning and it, oh my gosh, it helps in so many ways. So tell me what it's doing for you. So with one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, all kinds of good stuff, right? Oh. It's lifestyle friendly. You can eat it when you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, all the Woo. things. So it's good for me. Yeah, absolutely. And it costs less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit. And I love this. They're sustainable too for for every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. That's and, amazing. Yeah, they do like climate neutral certified, all that good stuff. That is amazing. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. Yeah, and to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash WWB. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash WWB to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for supporting What Women Binge. Welcome thank to the you. studio. That's great. Welcome, Megan. We're so happy to have you here, and um, thank you for coming in. Yes, thanks for having me, girls. So we, we got to give you some comfy socks first off. I've, I've okay. usually got my llamas. These are llamas, right? Are these llamas? I think they're llamas. I think I'm wearing llamas. They look llama-ish. Big basket. I'm going for there's, the fluffy white. I so there's it just looks so see. inviting. Oh yes, here. Okay. Some very oh, long so some fluffy red. white. How's do you that have look? red in there? Oh, you want red? Yeah. Let's do red. These are some stance socks. Oh, I love those. Yeah, these are good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going with this. A little pop of color. Yeah. I keep forgetting to give our guests, this season I've been really bad about giving our guests socks. I'm really glad I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud of myself. Pat on the back. So um, do you recycle them and wash them all? No, they're for you. You keep them. <laughs> okay. That's why I have to be careful about the ones that I wear and then not give them. Yeah, she has guests. two pairs that she pulls from, yes. so we always know they're hers. <laughs> so that's why if you had said green, I'd be like, mm, no, don't take those ones. They're I think nice. I've worn those. They're great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm always cold, so I wear socks all the time. Yeah, they're and you know what? We just want to be comfy in here. We want people to feel... Like, it's a warm, cozy place to talk about all your favorite binges. But anyway, but so people have been binging you for a very long time. Oh, I don't know about binge, but. Well, you're in their (laughs) house like every day. It's true. Hopefully, hopefully. (laughs) And then the Home for the Holidays thing. um, The, or, uh, oh. What's it called? The show that you... The, oh, Small Town Christmas. Small Town Christmas. I yes. love that. I kind of thought you might. about that. I yeah. kind of thought you might. I was still a Christmas I'm person. So, never. <laughs> but I'm so jealous because I have to like... We're about to shoot a Christmas movie here in Nashville and I have to make it look like Christmas. And you get to go to places where it already looks like Christmas. True. We do shoot a little bit early. We film one end of October and then November and then the tail, like the tail end of November, beginning of December, because we turn it so quickly. We got it on air two, three weeks later. So we shot season one last year and got a super late start. And then they aired all the Sundays in December. So it's it's very quick, and I bring decorations with me in case something <laughs> isn't super decorated. We need a snowman right here. That's a secret. Seriously, plus a little garland. Uh, poinsettias, poinsettia. by the way. That's what our uh, production designer uses on everything. If you ever watch our Christmas movies, you will see poinsettias everywhere. And usually they're falling over in the wind. They carry so many on the truck, and they're decorated everywhere. They'll cover cables if we have to. They mainly cover, like, hydrangeas, like people's flower beds and stuff. We stick like we've stuck Christmas trees in front of satellite dishes, and I mean, we had to cover that. Hey, that blooming cherry tree over there. Let's cover that with a Christmas tree. You know, like yeah, because you're in the middle of July it, or June. I'm. I get so <laughs> mad. I'm like, can we please shoot one of these when there's actually snow on the ground? I'm so sick of covering or not shooting up because it's green, or yeah. you know, not shooting that hillside because you know the vistas and the views, and yeah, have to hide all that. So small town Christmas. So. Tell, tell us about that. Like, yeah. what are you doing with tell that? The yeah. And the home. majority of the hotels in towns are decorated for right. Christmas. So it is it is authentic. But yeah, so I it's Travel Channel meets Hallmark Channel is what I tell people the show is. It's just when COVID hit um, and we're, we were all stuck inside, I thought, gosh, the minute it opens up again, I just want to travel with my family. That's something we always did anyways. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and there's a sweet little Christmas town out there, Leavenworth, Washington. If you've ever been to it, it's just... They shot a Christmas movie there? (laughs) I'm sure they have. If not, you probably will. (laughs) Write that down. (laughs) But um, we love to travel and see what's their spin on hot cocoa and how, you know, what carols do they sing at their church and what, you know, how's their parade different from my hometown? So I just... 
during COVID, I was like, gosh, it'd be really neat to do a travel show and, and visit all these small towns around the U.S. You know, I think small businesses are the heartbeat of our country. And what are all these sweet towns doing for Christmas? And let's just film it. Let's film the drinks, the events, the faith component, the nonprofits that are doing these huge coat drives and just all the different ways that they decorate. And I got to tell you, ladies, the funnest part of the process is the first phone call I make to these towns. They get so excited. Well, and everybody knows everybody. So uh. I call and I I find that one person, it's like, hey there, you know, our television show would like to come and feature your small town on this this TV show, Small Town Christmas. And they all go, oh, you got to call Betty Sue or Joe's your guy. They'll get you to the, the, and they the know unofficial mayor. Everybody. Exactly. The unofficial mayor. They know everybody. And it just starts falling in place because that's the way our small towns are, right? You still know your neighbors. You still know your local businesses. So the process of putting it together is so much fun. I get to know these people. And then we show up with our film crew and we try to do it in about four to five days. And we just go, go, go. I love to do really long days and then you're good, you know, kind so of each, all immersive. So is it each episode's a different Each town? episode's a different town. Season one, we had four. Only in the U.S.? Only in the U.S. Okay. Right yeah. now, at least. That's right. Because yeah. okay. I've been looking at Strasbourg for Christmas, I'm just going to say. Oh, yeah. I think I need to go there. Yeah. That'd be amazing. There's several little towns. So which one was your favorite one? First season, we did me. Branson, Missouri, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Natchitoches, Louisiana, and we ended in Somerville, South Carolina. And I have to say Bethlehem, Pennsylvania was really sweet just because of the name. It's known as the Christmas City. They are the only town in the U.S. that acts out a live nativity each night. Oh, really? You knock on the door of a business. You don't know what they're going to have. You open the door. The town gathers every night and they have a little treat for the villagers. It was really cool. That's To our knowledge, that's not done anywhere else in the country. But the Natchitoches, Louisiana was really fun because they do fireworks over the water. Um, They read the Cajun night before Christmas and it's Papa Noel with a cane and rain boots. They have their total own spin on Christmas. And so that was just very unique and yeah, fun to come yeah. home and tell my kids about. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. I actually did a movie. Uh, you just reminded me. I did a movie called Feliz Navidad with Mario Lopez a few years ago. I directed it. And um, and there was a part we were supposed to put in it. I forget what it's called. The tradition of, and I think it's a Mexican tradition of walking down the street at night and asking for a place to stay. And, like, they dress up as angels and different – I think the kids dress up as different. It's almost like trick-or-treating, but you go and knock on the door and and you get turned away at the – like, turned away from the inn every time. Like, do you have a place to stay? Do you have a place to stay? And they're like, no. And the street is lit with the luminarias, the um, – paper bag lights like oh, all the way yeah. down the street. There's lanterns. Yeah, and so that's how you know where you go like where you go to do and then oh, I guess there's a big fe- feast or a festival in the middle of the town at like Where at is the end this of town, it. Melissa? I don't know. She's I like taking notes yeah, like this, this one. I want to say it's a, I'll have to look it up but I I can't even remember what it's called. It's got La Posada. No, not La Posadas. Is it La Posadas? Las Posadas. Okay. Las Posadas. Going to yeah. find that. I'm going to so find called, that. So if you town. look up Las Posadas, it's a tradition I, I, I think it's like more like Latin America tradition, but um, I'm sure there's somewhere here that does it. We will definitely credit you in the episode Yay. with a shout out. I want to come to La Posada. Yes, I me, t- me yes. too. That sounds, and that's the whole concept is yeah. all the different ways that people celebrate the holiday that's and put their unique spin on it. I absolutely eat it up. I can't get enough. And so we're kicking off season two. We're actually going to do a little bit, a little bit different for season two. We're going to do the very first episode is going to be small town harvest. Oh, and we're going to go to an apple festival in Georgia um, just to do that for just something different because there's so many neat ways that it, you know, yeah. small towns in America celebrate autumn uh, Connecticut, and by the way, if you need another harvest. Uh, and Connecticut has a, like, it's actually hard here in Nashville. I'm trying to find a tree farm to shoot at. Up in Connecticut, you have all the tree farms where you go cut down your tree and stuff. And you sit, stand by the fire and warm your hands while they wrap the into your car. Yes. But you get the saw and you go out and you pick your tree and you cut it down as a family and drag it back. And the smell. Kids complain and they cry and they're cold <laughs> or it's too hot. or Yeah. yeah but that's, The smell. Yeah. The smell of cutting the tree and then the fire. They have like the, the tins with the fires. Yes. burning out of them. I feel like we should be doing this episode in December, so, by the way. I know. You would love the fourth episode of last year in Somerville, South Carolina. We went to the tree farm on Mistletoe Lane. You can't oh. make this stuff up. It's really on a street named Mistletoe Lane. And um, straight out of a Hallmark movie. They, they helped me. They helped me learn how to cut the tree and all these different Is ways. Is there a specific way you cut a Christmas tree? Um, No. I mean, there's so many different types of pines. I, and... I just make my husband do it. I've never actually done it. I, I wish I could say I went down. I wish I could say I had, but I haven't. The closest I've ever got is I was a Boy Scout when I was a child. Not a Girl Scout, but a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout. Oh, interesting. So I didn't girls know you could can do actually that. be Boy Scouts until oh. a certain age, or Cub Scouts, I should say. Okay. So I was a Cub Scout, and we sold Christmas trees every year as like a fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah. So I have memories of like helping with that and standing by the fire and all of that. 
but it's harder than it actually looks. cut them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harder than it looks. At least in my experience, I mean, it's pretty labor they're awkward. Intense. Yeah, they're awkward. There's yeah. sap involved. Yep. Yeah, things are sticky. There's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, you, you have cut it team. the wrong way. Do you have to cut the one side then the other side, and it's going to timber this way, or you know? Yeah. But then again, the ones that we cut were pretty small, so we just actually, put them on the top of the. You know, car. growing up. My, I don't know how I looked this up and I can't find it, but my dad used to we used to always get live trees. And so they'd actually be in there um, in the, the bulb would still be there. And then we planted them in the backyard and we still have them in the backyard of our childhood home. Like there's still like five Whoa. Christmas trees from our childhood That's that we awesome. replanted. I mean, for me, who loves to recycle and reuse and repurpose and all that. Beautiful. Nothing better than not killing a tree. For Christmas. <laughs> yes. No, it's true. Sadly, our home is entirely fake trees now. And, and, oh, yeah. But growing up in Seattle, we cut our own out of our backyard, too. Um, maybe someday we'll get back to that. Because yeah. Tennessee in does Tahoe, have great you can do it. Tree Tahoe, parks. you get you have to go. You have to wait in line forever. I've done it twice and get a permit. And then you they show you certain areas you're allowed to go out and cut your tree. It has to be a certain height and a certain width and it has to be apart from other trees. Basically, what you're doing is you're doing the fire prevention for the forestry. See, back yeah. so, in Alabama, yeah. my granddad would just go out to his hunting property. And literally just cut down whatever looked like a Christmas Find tree. A pretty <laughs> it was never like an actual uniform Christmas tree in their house. It was like, I think that's a cedar. That'll work. And they were usually kind of bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved like um, we actually I, I insisted one year. My cousins had had gotten their own tree in Reno. And I was like we were in Tahoe and I was like, we are cutting our own tree. And I, I, I like insisted with Mark, but I forgot it was a football day. And oh, no. This is in my house. I, I often forget after 20 years of marriage, you would th- well, 19 years of marriage, 20 years being together, you'd think I'd remember that it's the fall and it's a Saturday and I shouldn't try to do this. It's college football, by the way. That's why I said Saturday for those that don't know. Um, <laughs> but then, oh, my gosh, we went out in the woods. We had two little ones. He was so mad. It was he was trying to hurry and get it done. So we walked into the woods like a few steps and he's like, nope, not here. Let's turn around. Got in the truck, drove along the highway, pulled over on the side of the highway. He was like, I'm just going to take that one from down there. And he went down this big ravine. And I'm sitting in the car with the kids. They're crying. Cop pulls up. What are you guys doing on the side of the road? I'm like, uh, and I don't even know if we're within the permitted area. I'm like, um, <laughs> just <laughs> sitting here, um, getting a tree. And he was like, okay, just be safe. You know, you're on the side of the highway. Then my husband like cuts the tree down, has the permit, everything, tries to drag that tree up the hill, but the bushes were so thick and the tree would not get over them. Oh no. He ended up leaving it there with the permit and the saw. Like, here, somebody take this. <laughs> like, he's like, I can't get it, I can't get it up the hill. And he's a big guy. Yeah. He's pretty strong and he was pretty young at the time too like he was like can't do it winded and it was too difficult and he's like we drove right down to the grocery store and got one out of the <laughs> parking lot and somebody else let's hope came along I hope, I got hope. to enjoy well, labor talk, talk <laughs> yeah, let's talk about your book oh thank you new book right new so you book. do a lot of children's books well, this we, is this is my second children's oh, book second. okay which and it's such a sweet it's little first. world the first one is called more. one more hug uh, this came out about four years ago and it's about my oldest son who had anxiety getting on the school bus he kept oh. running back for one more hug mama one more hug over and over and over again to the point where we're like, buddy, it's time to go to school. And then our neighbors said to us, you know, I think he's asking for more than a hug there. Yeah. He needs some reassurance. And um, mm. and then I was talking to my publisher at Simon & Schuster and I had all these ideas for children's books. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about your family. How are your kids doing? And I told her that story and she goes, that's your story. Like write what you know. And so it's it. just the journey of a little boy and all the times when no matter what, you can run back for one more hug when you're, you know, getting ready to perform at that school concert or yeah. stepping up to the plate. Oh, and your illustrations baseball. are so, so sweet. Beautiful. I know. And Hiro it looks like Nakata you. is the illustrator. She, I kind of think, I think she did try to make it look like me, it which, does is look so, like you. which I so appreciate. Thank you, y'all. She's in Japan. I've never met her we oh, look really? forward to meeting one day. We, you know, converse on social media. But she graciously agreed to do my second children's book. It's the same illustrator for the magic of a small town Christmas. And um, she's just got a gift. She's got a talent for bringing words to life. Um, as, as you all know, kids' books would, I think, would be nothing without our illustrations. They're so so. Beautiful. let me see the Christmas one. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, the magic of a small town Christmas. I the magic that. of a small town Christmas. Just all the unique scenes that we think of that make these towns magical that you can read with your kids. And you've got such a great knowledge of that. I do. I do. Covered. You know, the, the church aglow with lights. The, oh. Every town has their Christmas tree lighting. Everybody has their local tree yeah. farm, like you mentioned, their local bakery. Um, yep, and the traditional woman that meals. Makes their cookies that they love. Exactly. All the and arts so, and crafts that come with the season. Exactly. Well, I think you need to take this and come to Christmas Con this year. There you yeah. go. That would have, that'd be fun. I mean, I'm a fan of anything holiday. Yeah. 
Zephyr. Well, and that Christmas so. con is so nice. It smells pretty. It looks pretty. There's pretty lights. I want to go to Christmas con. Music playing. Yeah, Christmas con is a fun one. That comes out October 18th um, in stores, but you can order it right now on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And you can get one Walmart more hug on and... Amazon too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. They're all online, so... Great. I can't wait. I'm going to like I'm looking for any excuse. My little one um, is going into third grade and uh, is struggling with reading. So like finding books that are a little bit simpler for him um, to get him excited and feel good about reading. So I'm going to bring this home to him. If, I, if that's yes. is for, absolutely for, okay. Okay. for both you ladies. <laughs> if they were. They are now. <laughs> and I, I will tell you, you know, the same, same with me. And that's why I love being a part of the children's book world is it's something to engage with your kids on, yeah. read together, talk about. Yeah, you're a boy mom, so. Yes. I'm a boy mom. Yeah, any boy ways moms. to get those boys to open up and get those share boys a little bit to, more of their emotions. To read and be emotional. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How old are your boys? So I have an 11-year-old boy, a 6-year-old boy, and then an almost 3-year-old girl. Oh, So we okay. did get a little girl. You got a little girl. <laughs> that was what I was going for, the two boys and a girl. Yeah. <laughs> you have three. I have boys. three, but the, it ended up being three boys. Yeah. <laughs> what are the ages? Third? Um, uh, third grade is the youngest, and then um, eighth grade and 11th grade. Okay. Yeah, I've got one that's, yeah, we've been, uh, I've been trying to find ways to connect with him more. It's tricky. Like, it's funny. I was, I saw a post yesterday. I, th- I got to post it, but it's, um, it's like parents that are like a mom of a, of a, of an infant, right? Holding in the arms, looking at the like toddler walking along, holding hands and saying like, oh, that looks so much easier. And then get into the toddler phase where you see like the big kid walking with his mom and you're like, oh, that would be so much easier. And then the mom with the big kid looking at the mom with the infant going, oh, that was so much easier. Yeah. You know, it's like all the stages have all their the challenges. Stages. And yet you're right, like precious joys. And as your kids get older, when you can converse with them, I find them that to be so sweet where you're like, oh, my yeah. goodness, they're a little person. When they now. start to <laughs> yeah, really be able to, I don't know, open up about, mm-hmm. you know. Their likes and dislikes, and and but the, I find myself so often like last night my son and I went out the sixteen year old, and I find that I just I'm I'm always trying to and my husband does the same thing we're always trying to teach a lesson I'm always like well did you know that um, you know that this happened and this is the history of that and this is this and this and I, like that's not what he wants to hear I'm not there to be his history teacher I'm not there to you know bring context to everything or 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 even like try, I keep trying to tell him about my life. But yeah. I, I need to be a better listener, like, about just, like, what he likes and ask the right questions to get him to open up. Yeah. And I'm struggling with it so much right now. You know what, though? I bet that they are taking it all in and down the road. I bet you'll be surprised that they will bring up – because my dad was that way. He was very much, let's go on a sightseeing tour and learn about the history of this and that. And I think of those things all the time, those little nuggets that he yeah. would plant in my head. So you're planting seeds. Hey, I took them on a European trip that I thought we went and did all of Australia and they were awesome on that. But that was aquariums and and, and beaches and things like that. And, uh, and then we went to Europe and I was like, they're ready for this. The next year I was like, they're ready for Europe. And we did this little like Italian Paris, Portugal trip, little, it was a big trip. But, um, I thought that they could handle like a little bit of time at the Coliseum or a little bit of time at this or that. And they ended up just being total punks about the whole thing. So nasty. They didn't like the heat. And then, but the thing that I remember is someone saying to me, because I was calling back home, just like miserable, like crying to people. Like, they shouldn't have brought them. <laughs> and they were like, well, they're going to use this someday when they go on a date or they meet a girl and they're going to be like, I ate yes. dinner in the Eiffel Tower. Yes. Yes. And that time, time I went to Paris. Versailles. Yes, yeah. When right. I went to Versailles or when I went to Venice and rode in that gondola. And it'll occur right. to them how special it was. Yeah. I hope. But I can relate to you because when we took both the boys to Disney World for the first time, you know how expensive it is? Mm-hmm. The tickets, the hotel, all of it. And we were right by the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And all my boys wanted to do was stand and watch this girl blow bubbles. <laughs> and I was like, guys, the coolest ride in the world is right there. No, we just want to enjoy these bubbles. And my husband and I were like, what are we doing? Like, when, we're at Disney World and we, they my have kids, bubbles yeah, back home. But my kids are like on their way in and they're like, I need a lollipop and a balloon. And I'm like, we could get all of that at like the dollar store. Yes, we have to go yes. to Disney World for that. <laughs> Come like, on. Yeah, I'm like, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You know, they want to sit and eat. I'm like, we don't have time to sit and eat. We got to go. We got to go. We got things to do. Yeah. We have parades to watch and shows to see and rides to ride. Yep. Yeah, not so their funny. pace. That's they so will funny. go at their own pace. It's yes. like giving them a Christmas present and they want to play with the box, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's that kind of thing. Yep. My sister, one year, my sisters are a lot younger than me. They're about, one of them's like 20 years younger than me. And one of them wanted, for Christmas, she wanted um, uh, uh, office supplies. She really wanted office supplies. So I took it a step up and I was like, I'm going to make her business cards. Ooh. So she wanted to start, uh, she was about, I don't know, 12 and she wanted to start like a division of, of scary movies for kids. 
So she wanted to do like a twisted Alice in Wonderland. This is before Tim Burton did it. She wanted to do a twisted Alice in Wonderland. And I was like, okay, so I made her business cards with her name on it with like a, the picture she had drawn of like a twisted, what a twisted Alice might look like, you know, and um, like spoo- like goth, like a goth Native. Alice or something. Yeah. So I made her these business cards, you know, I had to design them and like send them out and they were expensive. And I present them to her. She's like, and I also gave her like a porcelain Barbie that um, was like a collector's edition to put Ooh. on the shelf, but she didn't get to play with it. And she was just kind of like, yeah. Okay. My other sister stole from work a stapler, some tape, some like me- sticky notes and like um, index cards. And she was in heaven. You got me office supplies. I was like, she didn't even get them for you. She stole them from work. Yeah. <laughs> and I like had all these things made for you. This took me time and these money. These are personalized And she was cards. like, yeah, yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> and I'm like, who am I going to hand a business card to? You know? <laughs> I know. I know it's uh, but it reminds you go at their pace yeah. and it's sweet that the simple little things bring them pleasure. I know. And maybe we should take note, ladies, because it's easier on our wallet if we it remember is. that. If we don't have to, to go expensive. True. It's true. We really don't. It's true. Actually, that's why I, when I say Strasbourg that I want to go spend a Christmas in Strasbourg, I was like this year is the last year my son's going to be home for well, next year he'll be home for Christmas, but he'll want to be home for Christmas, I think, before he leaves for college. And then he's going to be wanting to come home for Christmas for the rest of their lives. Hopefully they'll want to come home for Christmas. Yeah. So I was like, if I was ever going to take them somewhere, this is the Christmas to do it. And I was like, and by the way, they have enough crap. Like my kids have right stuff coming out their gills. Like we are, yeah. they're a spoiled brats. We're good. So I was like, the experience should be like going somewhere new. Yeah. Like maybe get a little nutcracker or a little music yeah, box or something a, cute the- and sweet. Yeah. Christmas market. A little Christmas market. There you go. Right Plant- on the Ferris wheel. You're or- planting seeds. You're an intentional, thoughtful mom. That is huge. You're thinking through it. You remind me of my friend Janelle, who her and her husband, they homeschool and they just travel the world because they want to give their kids experiences. And she's like, we have days where everyone melts down and we're like, what are we doing? Yeah. But then their girls will bring up some neat experience and converse with my kids over something. And it's like, y'all are planting seeds. Yeah. Thank you. It's cool what you're giving You made me feel better. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) There's mom guilt on all ends, right? (laughs) Always. You can provide if you provide too much. If you, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, goodness. But let's, let's talk about what you're binging. What are you... We, let's steer away from Christmas, maybe. <laughs> sure, sure. I know. It Sorry, is midsummer. Everybody. Sorry about <laughs> no, that. But, we're excited know. anyway. It's coming around the corner. I know, right? <laughs> okay, so I know you all talk about TV shows and books and all sorts of things. So has anyone watched Kingdom Business on BET? No. No. Okay, so it was it's produced by Devon Franklin, who is a friend of mine and just a personal mentor. Just really, really admire him. Um, he wrote the book Produced by Faith. He wrote the book The Weight, um, a lot of self-help books. He's a preacher, also a Hollywood producer, though. He produced um, Heaven is for Real. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Unbreakable. Anyways, just incredible. And so he's got this new TV show. Let me say, it is not for kids. It okay. is not for families. Okay. okay. It's dark. But the premise and the storyline is very interesting to me. Um, it's Yolanda Adams, real-life gospel mm-hmm. singer, plays the head of a gospel record label did you all ever watch empire on tv not really no okay i i know that i yeah. like the story behind empire but i don't i okay. never watched this similar in terms of like a, a you know very wealthy influential powerful family in the music business and what that means mom is in control her husband is sort of like her right hand but the woman is clearly the power player they're in this whole you know gospel world churches and then there's a whole like just Inches away from them is a whole other dark side of mm. just different people and relationships. Again, not family friendly, but it's, I mean, I think it's very much tapping into just. It's called Kingdom. It's called Kingdom Business. Kingdom that, Business. That okay. People I'm are. A, down. Kingdom Business. People are a mess. Yeah. And I think the TV show reminds us of that. And yet is there's. It like Righteous Gemstones. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds familiar. I don't know what Righteous oh. Righteous Gemstones is the. Um, that one. Danny McBride. Who else is in that? John Goodman. Yes. Okay. Yes. I believe the it preacher, is similar. Like crooked preachers. Yes. Okay. It's more comedy, it sounds like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is more drama. No. This is dark. It's a drama. This sounds but... a little bit mafia, like like religious mafia. Yes. But also like very redemptive. There's there's redemption all throughout the show where you realize nobody's ever a lost cause, no matter how deep and oh, dark the world My husband might like that because he oh, hates he when people are redemption. unredeemable. Yeah. Yeah. He cannot stand when somebody goes off the rails and they're like... Like we're watching Lost still, believe it or not. We've been watching Lost all year, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> because it's so many episodes. Right. And of course, we only get like, you know, he falls asleep halfway through an episode, whatever. But um, there's, you know, when like 
just towards the end, I feel like there are starting to be some characters that were like, we just, they're just terrible people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, we liked them all at the beginning, but we're like, no, we're done with him. Well, and isn't it also sort of like Breaking Bad in these shows where sometimes the person that you're supposed to label as the bad guy has some really redeeming moments or is kind or does something really generous. And then the person that's supposedly the good guy starts making mistakes. That's yeah. sort of kingdom business. It's human nature. It's culture. Yeah. It's how, why do we make good decisions versus bad decisions? It's, well, it's really funny. I'm working with Rita Moreno and, um, and she, uh, I was, I was listening to her memoir before I started working with her and she, um, I think it. I think she said that she dated Marlon Brando off and on for years, and she yeah. said. I think she said that he taught her that you don't. Was this the, I mean, I might be mixing up my books or something here, but I think she said that you don't. You don't play the bad guy. You play the someone with an intention. Mm. So it's kind of like that, right? Like no, nobody. And I, that's what I do when I play a character. Is I don't like when I played the hoarder. Right mm-hmm. earlier this year, I did a movie about a hoarder, and it's like I didn't play. The like the hoarder, like I intentionally am going to hoard all. This. Like, what's the what's the actual intention behind it? It's that I'm afraid of losing stuff. I'm afraid of giving, getting yeah. rid of anything. I'm afraid of losing the monetary value or the sentimental value. So you know, and I always say like after I did. So I know you did God's Not Dead three. Yeah, yeah. So I did God Not God's absolutely. Not Dead two. Absolutely, you did. And yes. after doing that movie and the press that came after it, everyone was like, "Oh, you're only going to do Christian movies from now on. Are you only going to play good guys? You only want to play a certain." And I went, "No, because in the story of Jesus, someone has to play Judas. Absolutely. So who's the actor that plays Judas? Like yes. that's a great character to play. Yes. To figure out why he did what he did, or what his intention was, or what the background is of you know." Was it something his mommy did to him? or Like when you get right. into Maleficent or something. You, Absolutely. All of a sudden we have these heroes that are coming out of these, um, what were always our villains. Uh-huh. When you figure out that Maleficent had her wings cut off and she's heartbroken and that's why she becomes evil. Right? There's so always there's, a backstory. Yeah. There's always something that led up to those decisions. I love what you just said. Um, the Bible's full of messy people. Yeah. There are no, I mean, there are. Ultimately, the Bible is one happy ever after story, happily ever after story. One but, perfect person. Right. And one perfect person. And Everybody it. else is a mess. Yep. And God found a way to use them. So I hear you on that. And I think um, just exploring human nature and why we do the things we do is also just really fascinating. Yeah. The backstory on everything. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, kingdom business kingdom just business. for the adults. Amanda's right writing it down. down. She's got her book. She's I got, got it. Her list. I'll be curious what y'all think. And it's also a show where I'm like, I think I'll continue watching it. Have y'all ever been that way? Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if I'll go past season one. You know, some shows, it's just some a shows, small time that you're supposed to watch them. It's super weird that, like, I was really into Upload. I don't know if you know the show on Amazon. Obsessed with it. My husband and I binged it quickly, loved it. We were so excited the second season was coming out. It came out. We watched the first one. We're done. Like, yeah. I, I want to get back to it because I feel like you have to, you just, I don't know. I'm not someone that likes to leave the mm-hmm. queue unfinished. Yeah. But, like, I don't like to leave a book unread and I, you know, that kind of thing. So, it it does kind of like sit there in my heart of like I gotta get to some I gotta get back to it, yeah. but it's funny how some of those things like you expect you're gonna be you just can't wait and then you never get to it or the expect maybe the anticipation's too high for yes. something and and I think there's also nothing like the first season too right sometimes I sometimes don't know. it gets better lost well, sometimes they lost me around long. season four you've moved on <laughs> yeah it's true so for I would say. Lost had a good three seasons. Okay. Um, and then things got tricky. But yeah, but even like, but then again, we were, um, we talk about all the time about these classic shows like Friends or Seinfeld mm-hmm. or some of these shows where you don't have, uh, if if you didn't have the time to develop it, if you didn't get to season two or three, it like nowadays they would squash them within a few episodes. Good point. They would be like, nope, I don't like this because those, it takes time to develop those characters. and Yes, and appointment viewing. People knew they could watch it. What, Thursday nights it was always on? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and Friends you, and Seinfeld, I think we're back to back. You something. made a date and you did it and now we're on our own schedule. I miss appointment we watch it. I do too. I do but too. do you really? Because I love crawling into bed at 10 o'clock and be like, I've got two episodes of Only Murders to catch up on. <laughs> Well, one was, but see, but would you do a movie instead in that place? Like, I feel like I watched a lot more movies before TV shows started to no. take its place. I mean, I, we're if I'm going to watch a movie, my favorite is to like go to the theater. Yeah. So that for me is more of has taken the place of appointment television, I suppose, because you have to be intentional That's about yeah. going. Yes. But when it comes to like shows and binging and all of that, like I like the freedom to be like, I want to watch this right now. When I want to watch it. Do you watch a lot more TV now, though? Because I feel like back then you'd be like, whatever was on a rerun, you're like, yeah, I guess I'll just lay here and watch that. Or That's right. We didn't have as many choices. Or, yeah. We didn't have I, as many choices. Pick as up a book now. or turn off the TV, yeah. go to sleep. But I think yeah. that's my season of life, you know, with kids and being busy. 
before kids or when the kids were a lot smaller, I watched a ton of television. And I think I'll probably get back to that as they get older and have more time. But you read so much. And I don't understand how you read so much when you have the kids. But I just read in between everything. Like, and I'm fast. sitting on the sofa. And my fast. kids are watching Bluey. I pull out my book. Smart. Bluey, by the way? Is it Blue's Clues? Bluey is not is as life-changing as Daniel Tiger. <laughs> but is it, is, but it, is it as... Is it related to Blue's Clues? No. That's a very strange name. No, no, no. So Bluey is a blue healer puppy. She's a girl. And she comes... Blue's Clues is a puppy. Who's also a girl. This is very confusing. No, but it's nothing like Blue's Clues. It's it's storytelling. So she... It's like her life at home with her little sister and her parents. It's kind of like Peppa Pig, but with more okay. real life application. So you have little girls. My kids, I feel like my, even Riker, my little one has been obsessed with Stranger Things sometimes. since the beginning. So I can't uh, like, he's never been into the little kid shows. Well, you've got a three year old, so you're still in bluey land. Uh, I've seen it on the menu of our TV. <laughs> but we've never tapped on it. We're still baby shark. Everything. Oh, oh, sure. and a half, girl. So, Okay. <laughs> Well, when Bluey Mercy comes into me. view, oh, you will please. know. There, but it's it's just little short cartoons, and there's usually like a little life lesson. Like the one that stands out to me is there's this one where this um, budgie, like it's a little bird, you know, that they have attached to. I guess it got sick, and they rescued it, and then it ends up dying. Okay. And it's like obviously teaching children how to deal uh-huh. with death, and that it's okay to be sad, and. How, you know, walking them through the, those steps. And he, my nine-year-old even watched it, and he was like, why are we watching this? This is horrible. <laughs> and I was like, it's it's actually really good, you know, to talk about He's like, this is sad. I don't want to deal with this. And I'm like, well, it's don't making you Bambi. confront some issues you clearly have. Or Dumbo. Yeah. Or Dumbo. <laughs> Dumbo's the worst. Thank you for saying that. Oh, gosh. Everyone says Bum- Bambi's the worst, but Dumbo is no. the saddest movie it's in so Earth. It's so sad. So depressing. I refuse Fox to the watch Hound. the live action. Yes, yes. A lot it's of a the one. Disney. Homeward Bound. Yeah, I, I don't think Benji I know that one, was actually. depressing Benji. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I I hear you. On really, that. all of our childhood movies, y'all, full yeah. of trauma. Old Yeller, wasn't that oh, really? Yeah, right. Lassie. Yeah, I always it. had a uh, decent happy ending. Yo, my boys stumbled upon a cute one last night though. Um, Wish Dragon. It's on Netflix. I've heard oh, about this. Yeah. Really cute. I well, they were watching right. it, and again, I have eleven and a six year old, and um, and it's, they it's all their spin. It? Yes, and it's their spin on Aladdin. It's a dragon in a teapot instead of a genie in a oh, bottle okay. in Asian culture. And it's so well done. Constance Wu is the voice of the female. Oh, cute. But I was so proud of my boys because there was a cute little romantic scene, just a cute handhold scene between the boy and the girl. And I walked in. I said, Hallmark mommy moment. Because they always say that to me <laughs> when they're watching Hallmark. They're like, oh, gosh, another Hallmark mommy moment. I was like, boys, little Hallmark here in this movie. I'm impressed. And they were like, it's really good. <laughs> Wish Dragon for Wish all Dragon. ages. All right. There we check go. Check that one out. <laughs> well, we have some questions we ask everyone in season three. Okay. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right. Is there a movie that you would watch with commercials? Um, like it comes on TV and there's commercials and you're still going to sit through it. Yeah, probably Braveheart, Gladiator, oh, yeah. Count of Monte Cristo. Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, okay. Oh, man, I haven't thought about that movie in a minute. I don't think I know With that Patriot. movie. I mean, I know the you story, but I don't know that. You haven't watched Count of Monte Cristo? No. That, you need to add I that need to, to see your that. All right. one day when I actually have time in my life. Yeah, one day when I have time in my I'll life. I'll throw in one I'm more. Thinking. Sound of Music. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, I haven't shown my youngest. That. Like, I feel like a failure with my third one. Like, I, there's some <laughs> exactly every. <laughs> That's a long one, one though. How long is that movie? Uh, so like long. Two and a half, I think three, I was fell asleep hours. when she went back to the monastery. It was a right? two or not monastery, whatever. So. Oh, the, the Abbey. The Abbey. She went back yes. to the Abbey, and yes. then I always be like, <laughs> "How do you solve a problem like Maria?" That's right. That's right. Oh my um, gosh. Is there a book that you read yeah. super fast? Um. So just of late. I did finally read Going There by Katie Couric. Having worked in the television industry for so long, I'm like, I got to read this book, you know. And it was a quick read. Like, I just stayed up a couple nights in a row and read it. Um, it was it was okay. It is a little snarky. Like, oh, yeah. that's her, though. Oh, yeah. um, but it's interesting. I mean, I think she gives a very honest look at the television industry. And I really appreciated that she's like, I went from being everyone's best friend to – kind of off the radar there for a while when she left the Today Show and what that just does for your worldview and who you are as a person. So, um, fi- yeah, that was a quick read for me. Okay. I'm going. All right. Katie Let's Craig. check that out. <laughs> um, favorite show as a kid or teen? Saved by the Bell, baby. All oh, the way. Really? Every episode. Always wanted to be at the max. Like, it was Saved by the Bell in my house and I, I really kind of... So, Zach Morris or Slater, though? Zach Morris. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
fan of Mario Lopez, have met oh, him before. That's Great a, I, guy. I love that you put him with me. That's so funny. Absolutely. I know. You co-starred with <laughs> we him do before. Chris, we do a few Christmas movies together, <laughs> but, but I'm, yeah. I'm Zach Morris. I'm a body. Zach Morris, too. Yeah. Yeah. I like the the more skater kid. Um, yeah. Uh, Slater just had a shirt off too much. <laughs> yeah, it was a little too much skin showing. Well, and always the sh- audience going, woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and he just loves it. it. You could see in his face. He's just like eating it up. He's like, that's right, baby. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like my 16-year-old has turned into Slater. Yeah. Like always like the shirt off. The shirt and, like, off. Like, it's Work dinner it time. Can you please put a shirt on? You know, and he's like, what's up? Like, no. But looking back, it was so <laughs> sweet and innocent. Yeah. Like when I watch the show now, the problems that they dealt with mm-hmm. is a big deal when they kissed. Mm-hmm. Right. It was very innocent. Fun. And now you have euphoria. <laughs> and exactly. Oh. Now you have euphoria. <laughs> and that's the equivalent now. Social media. 13 reasons why and all those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy. Just. Just a sweet time, yeah. right? Um, that was precious, and my parents were like, "This is great that this is your show." They were Aww. all for it. So, oh, say by the bell, baby. Yeah, we got to get Mario on here some point. You do. Did you we watch the did. reboot? By the way, I watched the reboot, and Zach Morris has a Mark Paul Gosler. Yeah, call him by his Zach name, but he has a podcast. Oh, he does. Well, he'll go through the episodes and talk with co-stars and oh, different people, like which a, is interesting. A, what do you call those? Replay, a rewatch, rewatch, yeah. rewatch. Yeah, we haven't really done a. Watch here, have we, we should do one. We should. Yeah. I don't know. That seems weird. I don't know. I don't, do I have to watch my show and talk about it? Yeah. That seems weird. I, yeah, as do. a viewer, I love to hear the backstories. Okay. How somebody was feeling that day, how you were feeling, what see, happened in the makeup room. I'll see if I can remember. Not just like, me. I feel like I have a bad long term memory. I've been pushing this for. No, I know. And I wrote, I, when I wrote my book, what I realized was I have a terrible memory. I remember certain things a smell, a, a color, a, a visual. It's almost like a snapshot in my head, but I don't have all the details. Like, I'm listening to Rita Moreno's book, and she's 90 years old, and she remembers things from her teen years that I'm like, I don't remember yesterday, like, what I had for breakfast. So how do I remember something? You watch the episode, maybe, it spurs me. It'll maybe come it to you. Maybe It'll it come to you. All right, we'll try one. We'll we try have to one. live alongside you as, you, as it comes to you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe season four, we'll do that. There you go. Um, what is your favorite fast food joint? In and out, hands down. Oh, yeah, okay. I will... Wait in line for two hours to get my in and out. So what do you do when you're in Nashville? Uh, suffer. <laughs> I mean, we have Culver's, which is not a close second. We finally got um, what's the one? Um, um, Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Ugh. Which people go on? No, it's it's okay. It's not my, I'm not a it's fan. Okay. Of the Shakey. They Shack say we're gonna get a Whataburger. I haven't seen it yet. Having lived in Texas, it's okay. Whataburger. It's it's See, just not in and out. Five Guys. I do like In and Out, but the patties have gotten thin for me compared to Five Guys. Okay, I do like a Five Guys now. I don't know why. I, I prefer it. I get excited about it. Oh my gosh, really? In and Out is so good. But I do love, and you know that on the bottom of In and Out Burger, like everyone threw a fit with uh, Chick Fil A being a Christian company. They, but you know that on the bottom 16. of every, yeah, on the bottom of every uh, In and Out Burger wrapper, or um, oh sorry, the uh, uh, fry cups and the shake cups. There's a Bible verse. There's a Bible verse. Yeah, and it's really interestingly run. It's difficult to get a franchise. They have to really yeah know you, and you got to be a part of the Hence, family. There's only to a get few, in. like in California, and Nevada. Like, yeah, like one in Dallas, where Texas. Else? Are there, oh, there, I've there are. landed at the airport and gone straight there in an really? Uber. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. when we go to Tahoe, we land in Reno and we drive through one in Reno. And you know, there's one right at LAX, of course. Oh, of course, that always has a because line. that's where I meet my family when I have a long layover. I'm like, meet you at In-N-Out Burger. Yep. I'll take the shuttle over. Gosh, I've gone to In-N-Out twice in one day before lunch and dinner. <laughs> you know, well, I got my wisdom teeth out when I was about 22. Um, and uh, I knew I was going to spend a week in bed. And, but my main thing was just In-N-Out chocolate shakes. That's oh, like how I go. fed myself. There you go. I was like, can someone bring me an In-N-Out chocolate shake every day and that'll be my meal. Yeah. It was like meal replacement yeah. before I knew about protein shakes. Yeah. <laughs> it's the little things. But I was also 22 and my body could handle it. <laughs> right. I um, to be young. Right. Is there a show you refuse to watch? Uh, Game of Thrones. Not seen one episode. I'm yeah. mad right now. Not a fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, I, I, I get it. I said the same thing until I watched it. And okay. then I became obsessed. And that is a common narrative with people is that it would suck you right in and pull you right in. So just not even going to start. But um, I, 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 I would highly like um, <laughs> advise against not watching it. So I would advise to watch it because there are all these sequels and prequels and, and oh fun coming out. Yeah. I, am, I could not be more excited. Well, Look and- at her. She's like... In like a few days, Giddying I think, up, by the way, here. Say, well, House of Dragons comes out, and I'm so excited. And, and talk about a show with such a movement and a culture behind it. I mean, truly. Because it has its own captured, language. has its own language. Similar to like a Lord of the Rings. Yes. Or, you but, know, but see, I'm not a fan of, and I love Sean Astin, but I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings. Like, 
Not like this. That, that's this, what okay. people say. You give Lord of the Ring, uh, Lord of the Rings, a second try, and I'll consider Game of Thrones. Okay, deal. Yeah, I think you also. That. <laughs> I think you also have to know kind of what you're getting into. It just feels like a major commitment. So I didn't know. At, I can't it's do that. So dark. I, that's what I said. I was it's like, how dark. am I going to find seventy hours to? But I ended up working out of town, so and my days were getting done around three p.m. So I could binge two, three, four episodes in the evening with my like I take out I get some takeout food and sit on the couch and just binge yeah. and then go to bed and watch a few more yeah and um and I couldn't believe how much I how quickly I devoured them it is hard like the family bloodlines and following like the family who's on the throne and what each family means but once you get the hang of it and you kind of understand the landscape of things I mean you feel like you're in this you you have your own little you're in like a club it's like now I understand that I don't understand dragon dungeons and dragons but I understand how you can feel like this is mine. Like yeah. it feels like your own little private language. Yeah. But I was watching my sister and my mom talk about it. We went to a Comic-Con in San Diego a few years ago and they were like, can you believe they had the table from the Red Wedding? Can you believe they have the throne? Can you believe they have them? Like they set the whole table as if it was the scene. I'm like, and then they were talking about the Targaryens and the Lannisters. I'm like, and they, I was like, you are speaking Chinese right now. I have no clue what you're saying. Yeah. And then I got into it and I was like, I started doing prophecy. Like I started prophesizing about the last episode. Like oh who was gosh. gonna, what's gonna. Oh my we're like, well, remember that this happened and she went blind, and remember that this happened and he's dead, okay, but not when really she dead. Starts writing fan fiction. Oh, I started well, writing really fan fiction. Start and you know that's not me, Amanda. You know that's not me. <laughs> wow. So it got. It I mean, sucked you. Oh in my gosh. Completely. And I cannot wait for House of Dragons and everything else that comes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also got to know yourself and know your spirit. It's you just mentioned dark. I know it's too dark for me. My husband has watched Dexter. I can't. Yeah, I want to watch Dexter so bad. I feel like that would be such a good show for me, but I haven't done it. it, it it's not for me. I do get nightmares. Mm -hmm. I've, even as a little kid, I've had things that yeah. cause nightmares that continue into my adulthood. So I think it's knowing your spirit yeah, and what yeah, you yeah. can take in and what you can't. And I just think that one would be too much for me. Did you ever watch House? No. I never did. loved House. And I think I'd like, I was looking for something like House for my husband and I to dive into. And I thought Dexter would be a similar, because it's sort of like Breaking Bad in a way too. It's like a good guy that's, uh, well, with House, he's sort of a bad guy that has a good, um, uh, an, an, he's necessary, I guess. So he's a doctor who can diagnose just about anything in a really uncouth, like has no bedside manner, kind of helps, helps people. Yeah. Accidentally. Only because yeah. he wants his ego to be fed by the fact that he did it. Okay. So it seems like the opposite. Dexter is a killer who kills only bad guys or something like that. Right? I don't so, know. I refuse yeah. to watch it. No, I think Dexter yeah. is like, go there. Not like the, Breaking Bad. He's yeah, like a good he guy go, who he, has to. Yeah. He goes after only bad guys. Yeah. So there's a, that. that's a redeemable quality in me. Like in House, it's redeemable because he has like no love in his heart, but he does good accidentally, yeah. even if it's for his own ego. Yeah. He's saving lives. So you're kind of like, okay. It's all human experiment, human nature, yeah. all that stuff, which really is fascinating. I just think you got to know your limits. Yeah. And yeah. your time, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, a major commitment. I'm just saying, I, okay, look, are you a reader, though? Yeah. Okay, then read the f first book. Read the game. You too. No. Miss over there will read Which it by one? this evening. Game of Thrones. No, I really don't want to go there. Uh, I just really don't. Would, I can't. Uh, anything you could put on a screen, even my book? brain will make 15 times worse with words. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, you know what I like about it? And I've said She's this like, so many times. What I really like about it is it's unpredictable. <laughs> okay. And it's hard, I think, for me. But even with Game of Thrones, my mom had already watched it two times through, and she was watching a few episodes with me. And I would say things, and she'd be like, how do you know that that's going to happen? Like, what made you think of that? And she's like, I, f it's, I, would, I would be able to kind of see the little, and I think it's a filmmaking thing too, when they, you know, show something specific, a prop, or they specifically show something in the, um, uh, from last week's episode, like the, uh, in last week's episode, like I do this on Lost a lot. In last week's episode, we saw blah, 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 blah. And when they point at certain things, you're like, oh, this is going to play out this way. You know, yes. I, I don't know. I just can like. A hint of what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I love Game of Thrones. So. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's not where we agree. Um, is there a movie that you just don't understand the hype? Ooh. Um, that's an interesting one. Movie, I don't understand the hype. Uh, I could say that for TV shows, having never seen one episode of Seinfeld, I don't understand the hype because I've never seen the show. <laughs> Movies, I mean, I like Princess Bride, but some people are obsessed with the Princess Bride. We are like we Melissa. Do not agree. <laughs> like Melissa right here. Say, it's I have, a good movie, but like uh, uh, that, I was just at a conference. I have to where, leave now. To be, are you obsessed? <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. It's obsessed. good. 
Everything in it's my life good. is buttercup. Everything is buttercup in okay. my life. And 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 uh, my I have pillows in my house that say Inigo Montoya on them. And <laughs> my family, we all constantly are going, anybody want a peanut? Like, there's a lot of things we do. It's, you, you our know, like lives are centered around. You know why I bread. maybe don't like it is I saw it in junior high when I was really nervous to sit next to a cute boy. Oh. And so I just, it, maybe it tainted the experience for it's me. It's a fun family movie. <laughs> it would be a good no, one it to totally watch with your is. kids. Yes, yeah. I should. I should. Yeah. It has a cheese element to it, but I. But it's also like what I like about it is the grandfather's telling the story to Fred Savage, right? He's telling That's it to his true. grandson. Yep. And so then the little boy is like, ew, is this a kissing? So it is like a romance, yeah. cheesy romance novel, but with the aspect of a little boy listening to it. So he's like, no, there's pirates and there's killing and there's giants and there's, you know, like yeah. there's this whole. That's true. There's rodents of unusual size and like. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. It, it, it's I like. I love it. It makes me cry. In some ways, it's like the never ending story. It it's is like the never ending story. It's a funny. dream adventure. But very funny. So I'm not saying I don't get the hype. I think for me, it's just not my number one, where I think a lot of people from our generation, it's their number one. I will it's let number the one. Game of Thrones slide if you go watch Princess Bride one more time. I need to with my boys. No, thank you for the reminder and then you movie. call me and tell me if you still you agree. changed my mind. I yeah. want to know. No, I, I want to know. And they did love Never Ending Story. So. Never. You know what? And I'm going to a Comic-Con that um, the, never ending the whole story. cast is going to be there and they've actually recreated the um, Sadness Swamp, I think they call it. Oh, okay. Swamp of Sadness. Yeah, with the horse. They've recreated it at the Comic-Con. The horse scene. Yes. That's an emotional movie too. Uh, yeah. That, has it all. That one has a lot of, that one makes me cry. Like that yes. one really makes, like Never Ending Story and the, um, the Empress is, uh, I've actually become friends with her, How Tammy. How many times did you walk around Tammy. your we house get Tammy with a necklace on, oh, on, your head. on your head to look like her? Oh, yeah. She's stunning. And she still is. I like sne- secretly took pictures of her when we went to dinner. She <laughs> still like, looked just like that. It's oh my God, she's gorgeous. And she's in her, you know, I think she's like close to 50 or 50 now. I try you. I try you. I try you. I, I literally <laughs> was sitting at dinner and like took pictures of her from across the table sneakily and then sent them to my sister. I was like, look who I'm having dinner with. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Epic adventures. Such good movies. Great stories. Really so, good. Do love those. Um, is there a workout that you gave up on? Um, just burpees. I just <laughs> hate burpees. Can't stand them. I'm can't do them. Same. Yesterday, we did a few yesterday. It makes yeah. me want to cry and just quit and walk out. Yeah. Like, Why would I just, anybody do a burpee? No, my husband loves them. He's super into like Spartan races and tough mutters and the whole deal. Burpees like, don't bother me. There's a lot of other things that bother are me. So many a form of things to do. <laughs> <Torture>. <laughs> it's just, it's, I just, I'm like, I'm done. No, I'm done. But see, what I'm I feel about a burpee burpees. is that it's an all inclusive. Like, do this and you're kind of covered. You got the arms, the legs, the, you know, you got to squat do this, in. You and you'll hate yourself in. tomorrow. <laughs> you yeah. got to well, jump it's, in. It's everything I'm not good at a squat, a push up, getting up quickly, <laughs> you know, the quick bounce up on your feet. I was never good at that. Like, I just, I'm like, I'm done. So if you put it dead last in my workout, I will be happy. A couple. But no, I. I, I or we can walk the, out. <laughs> that's me with yoga. I hate yoga. Yeah. Because, uh, because yeah, I I feel like the thing that you hate is the thing you need the most, right? Yeah, probably. Like, There's I like need yoga need so badly, and I just do not want to do it. Yeah. Um, is Do you have a favorite genre of books? Uh, self-help, anything psychological, okay. deep thinking, culture, human most nature. Um, uh, well, I'm working through one called... Um, in, in into our lives first, which is for counselors, but it was recommended to me. It's just really interesting about just staying centered. I think as mothers, we're always helping other people, caring for other people, caring for friends, husbands, our jobs, like remembering, you know, what is important for you and your healing and your faith and that your relationship with the Lord needs to be number one. And it's just interesting through the lens of a counselor because they're always giving and listening and hearing a lot of things. Um, it's by Diane Langberg, who's just a very interesting author. So yeah. cool. just a good self-help book. I like it. Um, is there a short podcast? I don't know why I wrote short. Why do I? Is there a podcast you have on like constant? Like one of your what's your favorite podcast? Basically, the newest <laughs> one is Drama Queens, which is the ladies of One Tree Hill. Oh, okay. Uh, Joy Lenz, um, Hillary Burton, and Sophia Bush doing what you need to do, walking through the episodes of One Tree Hill. I I jumped on the One Tree Hill bandwagon super late. I'm actually still working through the episodes now and going, oh my gosh, you know, it's a fascinating show. And then to hear them talk about it, it's yeah. just really fun. Again, love the backstories. I guess I got to do a watch watch along. We need to watch One Tree Hill too. We just had Janet Kramer actually, on who was on several sure. seasons of it. Yeah, I almost was, turned it on the other day, but then I didn't do it. Yeah, I should. watched the first few seasons, but I don't. I, I feel like I was a little, I'm a little bit older than you guys. I, I feel like I was a little bit ahead of it. Like I was a little, like it, it kind of hit, 
it was my 90210. Like, I feel like I was right there in the 90210 sweet spot, which might be mm-hmm. like a little bit late for you guys, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you're, I mean, you're still in your 30s and you, are you 40? 42. 42. Yeah. So I'm 46. So I feel like, yeah, my high school years were definitely. I mean, that was the end of high Ian, school for me when Ian Luke Perry. So that would have been, yeah, you were well into adulthood. But yeah. I was already on Sabrina, right? So I was, I was a little bit. I never watched TV. Honestly, I never watched TV until I met my husband and he forced me to watch. I had a TV in my bedroom, but never, ever turned it on unless I was sick. Yeah. And then he came into my life and we had to watch TV every night. And I was like, what is this new hell? Like, <laughs> this, this room is for darkness and sleeping. And but only one other thing, <laughs> not watching TV. The other podcast, though, that I absolutely devoured and loved is The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. If you're familiar with that church in Seattle, having grown up in Seattle, I see somebody in the back of the room nodding. Thank you, brothers. Um, Having grown up in Seattle and knowing what the Mars Hill Church meant to that city. Okay. And just the whole, again, human nature, rise and fall. um, Very fascinating and interesting. It was a time in the 2000s, I think, that was uh, really interesting for just Christianity. And Mark Driscoll was the pastor. So the rise and fall of Mars Hill is very interesting. Mark Driscoll rings a bell. I think I do know. That yeah, right now. I'm gonna so turn that one on the way one. home. Those are the ones where you're like, the episode is dropping today. Like I actually was ready for it when it dropped on my app. I can't think of any other podcast where I just oh. anticipated it. And then not ours. Thanks a lot. I, I'm well, just kidding. Now <laughs> it is. Now it is. Now it is, ladies. But um, and then the, t- the the Twitter conversation around it that people okay. would have after listening to the episodes and all the conversations that, well, that were branch involved off. with the church and stuff. Just or? just listening to it okay. and going, hey, I remember this and da da da, and I read this book and so that that was fun. Did I had, you watch? Uh, uh, remnant, um, the Remnant Church. Uh, the way down. Way down. I did not have heard about it. You need, it you need that's to watch good it. Since you're a Nash villain, you need to check that one out because that, that is a local, it's a little local dark, crazy it's story. It's not too bad. Like, you could handle it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a quick five episodes yeah, on HBO Max, fast. right? There's no podcast about it, though, is there? Or I'm sure there is. Somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Um, and finally, do you have a favorite reading spot? Like, do you always read? Like, I always read on the airplane. Me That's too. The one place where I try to yeah. get my reading in. Me too. I would say the airplane, the train when I'm in New York City, oh, subway, anywhere where you York. can pull out yeah. your book. Back always of an have Uber. To have a book in New York. Yeah, I love it. Back of an Uber, but Ugh, it, back of the Uber, I puke. No, <laughs> that I can read in cars. I know a lot of people aren't that oh, way, I but can't. I can taxi, car. I can read. That's impressive. I have to fall asleep because I I don't know if it's. I've been told it's a control thing. If I'm not in control, I get car sick or motion sick. If I'm not the one driving. So I have to be That's asleep. That's true. You always drive. I have to be asleep. Yeah. If I'm not driving, it literally drove someone crazy the other day. Um, we were working together. It was a location scout. We were going to look at locations for the movie we're shooting. And I was. he was like, can we drive together so we can talk about what we need? And I was like, nope, unless you want to get in my car because I have to drive. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be passed out. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I'm impressed that you can do that, though. Oh, but I'm the jealous. other spot is the bathtub. Oh. I read in the bathtub. I got my back pillow. Your kids leave my you alone? Up. Yes. Or I lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I read. Hands can only go impressive. so far under that door. Yeah, that's impressive. Right. impressive. That's right. Yeah, but when they're banging on the door, it's just not relaxing. Um, True. I we need to check your it. inbox. What is it? <laughs> She's oh, with you. She's is she with Amanda. you? 10,772? Wait, it's going up. Yeah. <laughs> 766? Did it just I'm go at 7,109. I beat you, sister. Currently. I beat you. Oh, I never goodness, delete. You guys. She I made never me delete. That's why it's this delete. Place. This is an issue. This My is husband's issue. like, what on earth? We're going to have a therapy session after this. We, You guys are going to go clean out your inbox for an hour. Love and then for who we we're going to sit for 70 hours and watch Game of Thrones. And then Princess Bride again. Okay? <laughs> this is what Princess we're doing. Bride. This is what we're doing. <laughs> no, I just don't delete. There's no time. What no. about if you need it later? And right. then all of a sudden you're 100 anything. in. Well, I'm not saying day. that mine are not. Um, I'm not saying that I delete all of them. I mean, I, I have 77 unread. Opened, but ah. in my inbox are, um, in my inbox com- totally, are you know, there's like 20,000 in there. But they're <laughs> maybe not that many. But actually, I, I don't know how to tell. I think I can do it on my computer. But I just have 77 unread. Yeah. But, well, and, I, th- and I have a lot of folders. I think I told you about that thing called SaneBox. Mm-hmm. I saw this advertisement once in LAX. I don't even know if it still exists. But there was something called SaneBox. And they put it, they actually, I still have the Sane folders down here. See, it says Sane Archive, Sane Black Hole, Sane Later, Sane News, Sane No Reply. Okay. So it created these. Um, and you train it. You're like, these emails should always go to archive. These should go to trash. These should go to drunk. These should go to shopping. These okay. should go. And you train it over okay. the course of a month or two. And then it starts 
feeding them into, I think like Google Mail does that too and stuff, where you can like train it to go into a certain folder so you can check it out. Like, this is news. When I have some time to sit and want, read the news, I'll read these. Open up this Or, book. yeah, so that really yeah, helped I'm never going to do that. I was going to say, it's to the point now where I just have a separate email that very few people know about. And mm-hmm. so, if, you know, just you know you're going to be okay over there because this is just hopeless at yeah. this point. Well, like, if we go into I a monkeypox lockdown, will you please go through your emails, okay? Yeah. Can I get you oh, girls God. to just finally... I never miss an email. I rarely miss an email. Actually, yesterday I opened my junk folder because I do that occasionally just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And I had missed a couple of important emails that got sent to junk and I was like, yeah, but that could happen to me. That happens to me too. That's, a problem. That's not but because of your if you If it unreads. makes it into my real email box... I'm not going to necessarily mark it as red if I didn't read it. But if how do you a, even know? I just don't ever send. Like I go because you just look at the times a day because you can see the one line or the subject line is enough yeah. for you. And I can tell who it's from. So most of these are like junk. Yeah. So why open them? All right. I'm the same way. You just scroll and I'll let it go. go. Season yeah. four, I'll let it go. All these things we wish we had time to do. I know. I know. You know what I did during like part of my lockdown um, stuff? I spent a few days. I had two Shutterfly accounts, like with all the photos. Sure. And I had, I finally decided to just move them all to one. So it was a matter of like going through, deleting, transferring. Like, so it was, it was just a way for me to try to organize digital files, which is such a complicated thing to try to organize, right? Very much so. Oh. Yeah. Dropbox, all that. Just, oh, Dropbox. Oh, it drives me crazy. I know. I just want to hire somebody to take over that part I know. of my Can life. Someone just be, that's what I, I just need like three more of me or like two wives. Yeah. The problem is you say, well, organize this. And then they're like, well, but what are your likes and right. dislikes? Like, what are your systems? You, yeah. you gotta, can you just take my brain yeah. for right. a day? Just, like I would like. Yeah. I had a friend yeah. who was my assistant who could be me, literally could be me. That's and a She gift. made better decisions than I did that about my life. Gift. And I, yeah. And I was sad when she had babies and left me. But, um, but Amanda, do you want to do the this or that? Yes, I would love to. We have a little this or that. Okay. And this this season's a little weird. Amanda and I are going to work on this. I think next season we're going to have it where... Come back. We'll ask you different We're going to have her this and my that or whatever. <laughs> All right. Superman or Batman? Batman. Spray tan or tanning bed? Spray tan. Mascara or lipstick? Uh, lipstick. Chess or Scrabble? Chess. Sand or snow? Snow. <laughs> really? Of course. Christmas. Christmas. Mountain. Well. Small town Christmas. <laughs> okay. Twizzlers or red vines? Red vines. Can't Ew. stand Twizzlers. My plastic. West coast. West coast. West oh, coast. Plastic. Ugh. Told you. I feel like red vines taste like plastic. I know. Vines That's what everyone, the, the East delicious. Coasters think red vines taste like plastic and West Coasters think it's, this she's is, it's kind a, of a, an, I mean, she, well, you were born West Coast, so maybe that's the difference. Now but she's you, totally Now West you're East Coaster. Like, yeah. You yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's where, you, it's where you went to the movies when you were a teenager. That's what, what it, you tasted first. Yep. I tasted red wine first. Can I go back and say Batman, Christian Bale? Oh. <laughs> like when you say Batman, it's like, is it Michael Keaton? Is it Val Kilmer? Christian Bale is yes. Batman. See, Just I'm to going clarify. with Michael Keaton on the Batman. Okay. <laughs> oh. He was a great Batman. Ben Affleck was Batman. Like, yeah, that was oh. weird. Yeah. Now, now it's like Robert, <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Yeah. No, no, no. Christian Bale. Which is the Bale. weirdest get these really like, skinny dudes, skinny tall dudes yeah. for Batman, which is weird. Um, mustache or clean shaven? Clean shaven. Even though my husband has a goatee. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> He's the only one that can have it. Not a mustache, though. <laughs> Not a mustache. Not goatee. about my husband. Every other man. Goatee. <laughs> uh, TV shows or movies? Oh, I can't, it's it's got to be a tie. I really okay. think, yeah. Um, uh, this one's weird, but plucked or threaded? Threaded for eyebrows. So painful. Yeah. I like it. She loves it's it. Fast. It's fast. It's fast. It's fast. It gets it done. Yep, they're great. Oh, I just I, I can get feel out. it plucking. I got to work too hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're gonna. They kind of end up doing a little plucking anyways at the threading That's places, true. That's but true. the majority of it is threading. All so. right, Nirvana or Foo Fighters. Having grown up in Seattle, oh. uh, I got to say neither. Pearl Jam? Because, well, he, that is all my <laughs> ch- youth and childhood in Seattle, but I wasn't into grunge. Okay. Did you like country? Um, yeah. No, truly. <laughs> Did you really? KMPS was the big country station in Seattle, and I was always not into it. That's how you ended up in Nashville. 
I, I can tell you about all these bands. Like the the drummer for Soundgarden lived down the street from me <gasps> in Seattle. Do you still know him? Can I see him? Uh, I see he was him? kind of a recluse. Have him call but, me. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know like Dave Grohl and all them. Like I know of all of them. And when uh, Kurt Cobain passed away, people literally went into mourning in oh, Seattle. Oh, I did in New York as, City. As yeah. you know, like I experienced it, but I just was never into grudge music. It was to me, the best part of it was wearing flannels and Birkenstocks to school. Uh, I participated see, here in I was the in New York, style York, side of it. I was in Seattle. <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't into the music. What about y'all? What would you choose? I'm Foo Fighters. I, okay. I, I'm Foo Fighters. Okay. I think better music. See, I, I, would I say, love the passion of like Nirvana, just the... My answer to you is Backstreet Boys are in sync. Both. Uh, like, I that's know. where that I go. Was, that was a season one question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. That was what I was And then there was to. Elvis or Beatles was second season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... But um, wait, real quick. So growing up in Seattle, did you know a lot about Francis Farmer? Was that like a story told around there? Francis Farmer, who is that? Okay, so I guess not. Okay. No, who is that? <laughs> so the movie Francis with Jessica Lange that she won the Oscar for um, is about Francis Farmer. And Nirvana has a song called Francis Farmer Will Have Her Revenge on Seattle. And Francis, uh, his daughter was named Francis Bean. Yeah, sure. And Courtney Love wore um, a dress that was Francis Farmer's original dress to their wedding. Um I guess, so I thought it was a big part of the culture up there. So she was an actress who started off in theater in Seattle. Yeah. Went to Hollywood. She did not like Hollywood. Like, I feel like uh, uh, there's a few other actors I'm reading about right now that I feel like the same sort of thing. She did not like the way Hollywood was, like why she had to do publicity and promotion when she just wanted to play the parts. And so she quit the business and her mom had her committed to mental institutions like two or three times. Gosh. She broke out twice. Um I think once with her boyfriend or whatever. And then they get, they lobotomized her. Oh, God. So she had a lobotomy and she was on that show. Uh, like It was like a Where Are They Now show mm. in like the 60s or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you got to see the movie Francis. Okay. And she wrote a book called Will There Really Be a Morning, which I still haven't read. I need Gosh. to read that book. But um, Like post all of this, she wrote a book? I don't know when she wrote it. It must have been after the lobotomy. I mean, she was around for a long time after the lobotomy, um, but... Just no emotion. She was just wow. emotionless. Oh my goodness! I'm, you got to watch the movie. It's pretty powerful. I was gonna say I knew only that he named his daughter Frances yeah. Bean. I didn't yeah. know anything on that backstory, so I need to check yeah. it out. Frances Farmer, check her out. And I'm sure friends in Seattle would have. Oh yeah, known. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so I just wondered because Nirvana was obsessed with her. Like when I I always loved the movie, and then I saw that that Nirvana had the song, and I was like, I wonder if this is like a big thing in Seattle. And I've never asked anybody before, like, yeah. was this part of the culture of growing up of, like, knowing about Frances Farmer? Is she like a... Sure. You know who might know is my sister. She's a couple years older than me, and she was more into the scene. So I'm going to yeah. ask her. Well, but she was... I mean, but Frances was in this, like, Audrey Hepburn days. Right. Like, I just mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kurt but, Cobain. But follow... Yeah. Courtney Check out the story. Someone. Check out the movie. For it's sure. Incredible. Oh, my gosh. Jessica Lang. Yeah. Seriously incredible. Oscar. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, ladies. This was so hey. fun. So everybody can check out your books mm-hmm. on Amazon. On one more hug and the new one coming out. The you can magic pre-order. Of a small town, Chris. That's right. And yeah. the show is on Up TV, Up Faith and Family, and it will be on this December season two, Small Town Christmas. Hey, check I it out, everybody. Wait. Thank you so much. I can't wait, but not. I you can can't wait, wait for, for Christmas, but can you wait can't for wait for Christmas. the show. <laughs> you can watch it now, anyway. You can probably watch last season, right? That's right. So catch up on last season and then check out the new season this year. Get ready gets you in the mood. Thank you guys. Thanks for being here. Bye. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us here at What Women Binge. Can you do us a favor and give us an Apple podcast review? It helps a lot. Yeah, and while you're at it, you can follow What Women Binge on Instagram. And follow me on Instagram, at Amanda WWB. If you like listening to the podcast, you would love seeing it. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Melissa Joan Hart Official, for full episodes, bonus content, and so much more. What Women Binge is produced by Laughagram Studios. Our wonderful theme song was written and produced by my cute husband, Mark Wilkerson. Video production by Matt Giesler and Jay Hawley. Audio by Matt Lott. Production assistant, Jen Best. And she is the best. What Women Binge is distributed by Podcast Heat. For more information, visit podcastheat.com. Do you have a question or a comment or a topic you want to suggest for the show? Well, we are listening. Email us at wwbquestions at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you.